Hey Fast Track, in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to fill in the unit circle and how it relates to trigonometry. So the very first thing you have to know about the unit circle is that the unit circle is a circle with a radius of 1. So keep that in mind, we'll use that more towards the end of the video. So the very first thing I want you guys um, to learn is how to fill in the unit circle. So let's start with the degrees. So you already know that this right here is 0 degrees. And if I do one full revolution, so from here all the way to here, that is 360 degrees. So a semicircle, half a circle, that right there is 180 degrees. And then half of that is 90 degrees. In other words, every quadrant is 90 degrees. So 180 plus 90 makes this down here 270. And of course, if you had 270 plus 90, you get 360. Now, so let's uh, use this to fill in our first quadrant. So from here to here is 90, so half of that is 45. And from our hand trick video, you already got, you already guys, you already know that this right here will be 30 and this right here is 60 degrees. So we're gonna use our first quadrant to help us fill in the remaining degrees on the circle. So here's how we're going to use our first quadrant to fill in the remaining degrees. Notice that from here to here is 30. From here to here, you add 15. From here to here, you add 15 more. And from here to here, you add 30. So we're gonna follow that pattern to fill in the whole circle. So again, the pattern is 30, 15, 15, and 30. So we're at 90 degrees. To get from here to here, you add 30. That gives you 120. Now to fill in the next degree, from here to here, you add 15 to that. That gives you 135. To fill in the next degree, you add 15 more. That gives you 150. And of course, 150 plus 30 gives you 180. Now let's fill in the third quadrant. So from here to here, you add 30. That leaves you at 210. From here to here, you add 15. That leaves you at 225. Add 15 again. That leaves you at 240. And of course, add 30 more. That leaves you at 270. Now let's fill in the fourth quadrant. So this was 240. So from here to here, we're going to add 30. That leaves us at 300 degrees. From here to here, we're going to add 15. That leaves us at 315. Add 15 degrees more. That leaves you at 330. And of course, if you add 30, that leaves you at 360 degrees. So, so far we filled in the degrees for our unit circle. Okay, the next thing I want you guys uh, to focus on is the radians. So here's the word if you want to write it down. So radians is just another way of measuring an angle. Let's start with the following. Zero degrees is equivalent to zero radians. One full revolution is two pi. So in other words, 360 degrees is equivalent to two pi radians. So since one full revolution is two pi, half of two pi is one pi. So a semicircle is pi for radians. So to fill in the 90 degrees with the radian, half of pi is pi over two. In other words, every quadrant is pi over two. So let me show you from here to here is pi over 2. If you go from here to here, you add another pi over 2, so that gives you 2 pi over 2, and of course that reduces to pi. Now, we left off at 2 pi over 2. If you add another quadrant, that leaves you off at 3 pi over 2. And if you add the fourth quadrant, that leaves you off at 4 pi over 2. And of course, this reduces to 2 pi, which we already knew. 
So let me erase the following. So that right there is going to help us fill out our first quadrant. And after that, that's going to be helpful to fill out the remaining circle. So from here to here is one pi over two. Half of that will be pi over four. Now, these are the ones that you have to memorize. So starting over here with the 90 degree angle, it's pi over two. And if you move clockwise, you get pi over three and it actually skips pi over five and you go to pi over six. So in another video, I'm gonna show you guys how to convert from degrees and radians. But just for today, know that 30 degrees is equivalent to pi over six, 45 degrees is equivalent to one pi over four, 60 degrees is equivalent to pi over three, and 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over two. So that's going to help us fill out the remaining part of our radians in our unit circle. So just like we did with the degrees, let's use the following pattern to fill out the following. So notice that from here to here is pi over 6. So the pattern here is every 30 degrees. So before I do that, know that I'm going to do from here to here, from here to here and from here to here. So the pattern is every 30 degrees. And instead of 30 degrees, I'm gonna call that pi over six because they are equivalent. Now, from here to here is pi over six, which we already have. If we add 30 more degrees, so from here to here, you have two pi over six. And of course, if you reduce that, you get pi over three. Now, 30 more degrees, so from here to here, you're at three pi over six. And of course that reduces to pi over two. So let's keep the pattern going. We left off at three pi over six. So 30 more degrees, that leaves you at four pi over six. And of course you have to reduce it. So if you reduce four pi over six, you get two pi over three. So we left off at four pi over six. You're gonna go 30 more degrees. So from here to here, that leaves you at five pi over six. You're gonna go 30 degrees more. That leaves you at six pi over six. And of course that reduces to pi. So we left off at six pi over six. Let's move 30 degrees more. That leaves you at seven pi over six. 30 more that leaves us at a pi over six but of course that reduces to four pi over three 30 degrees more you are at nine pi over six and of course that reduces to three pi over two radians so we're almost done so at 30 more degrees that leaves you at 10 pi over six but of course, if you reduce that, you get five pi over three. If you add 30 more degrees, you're at 11 pi over six. That doesn't reduce, so you just write it down. If you do 30 more degrees, that leaves you at 12 pi over six. And of course, that reduces to two pi, one full revolution. So let me erase all this little work so you won't get confused even more. So again, we filled out the degrees and we filled out the radians. For the degrees, we follow the following pattern. 30, 15, 15, and 30, all the way around the circle. For the degrees, we used, first we used uh, pi over four. So from here to here, one pi over four. From here to here, two pi over four. Three pi over four. 4 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and so on. Now for the order pairs, let's fill them out. So remember at the very beginning I told you that this circle is a circle with radius of 1. So from here to here, the distance is 1. So if you fill in the order pair, you get 
1 comma 0. So again, circle with radius of 1, so the distance from here to here is also 1, and the order pair there is 0 comma 1. So over here, the radius is 1 here as well, so that order pair is negative 1 comma 0. And the last one, from the center to this point, the radius is 1. So of course, the order pair is 0 comma negative 1. Uh, the next thing I want you guys to know how to do is, well here, you already know this from the hand trick video. So let's go quadrant by quadrant. This right here is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. So let's list what's positive and what's negative in each quadrant. So remember to help you guys remember that, you have to know the acronym All Students Take Calculus. So in the first quadrant, all trig functions are positive and you don't have any negative trig functions in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, only sine and its reciprocal are positive, so only sine and cosecant. So that makes the remaining four trig functions negative. So instead of listing them, just know that. In the third quadrant, tangent and cotangent are positive and the remaining four are negative. In the fourth quadrant, all students take calculus, so of course cosine and secant are positive, the remaining four are negative. So now let's fill out the remaining order pairs. And by the way, I noticed that we did not fill out all of our radians. So we'll go and fill those out in a minute. Now let's fill in the order pairs. So one more thing you guys have to memorize, the order pairs on a unit circle follow the following order. So you know that a order pair is x comma y. For a unit circle, or for a point on a unit circle, you have to know that x will be represented by the cosine of theta, and the y will be represented by the sine of theta. So to get the order pair for this point, notice that this point right there is 30 degrees. So you have to do the cosine of 30 degrees, and you also have to do the sine of 30 degrees. And whatever the value is, you're going to put those here and here. Now, the cosine of 30 degrees. So you have to do the hand trick. So 30 degree angle is your ring finger and cosine is square root of top fingers over 2. So hold out your left hand, pull in your ring finger, cosine of 30. So we're doing the x value first. So cosine square root of top, which is 3. So square root of 3 over 2. Now let's do the sine of 30. So again, pull back your ring finger and sine is square root of bottom fingers, which is one over two. And if you reduce that, you get one half. So you have to do the following all around the circle. Now the next order pair, which is this one here, uses 45 degrees. So to get the X value, we're going to do the cosine of 45 degrees. To get the y value, we're going to do the sine of 45 degrees. So now you're pulling back your middle finger. And to do the cosine of 45 degrees, you do square root of top fingers, which is 2 over 2. To do the sine of 45, sine of 45 is square root of bottom. So two fingers at the bottom over 2. And that's the order pair for the cosine and sine of 45 degrees. Now the next degree is 60 degrees. So we're gonna do the cosine of 60 degrees and the sine of 60 degrees. So now the finger that you're pulling back is the index finger. And if you do the cosine of 60, cosine square root of top, you have one finger at the top, so the square root of one is one, and of course over two. You're still pulling back your index finger, now you do the sine, so which is will be the y value. Sine of 60 degrees will be square root of bottom fingers, which is square root of 3 over 2. Now, and I didn't check the sine because earlier we spoke about 
all trig functions being positive in the first quadrant. So one more thing, you can also get these points here at 90 degrees using a cosine and sine. So at this point here, we are at 90 degrees. So if you do the cosine of 90 degrees, and if you do the sine of 90 degrees, you also get 0 comma 1, which is a point we already had up there. Now to fill out the remaining, to fill out the remaining part of the circle, you just have to know um, reference angles. Now to fill out the ordered pair for 120 degrees, you can still do the same thing we've been doing. So again, the x value will be cosine of theta and the y value will be sine of theta. So the degree we're doing there is 120. Now remember, to do the hand trick, you have to do reference angle first. So let's do the first one together. 120 degrees will land you right here, as you already know, in the second quadrant. In order to do the hand trick, you first have to do the reference angle. So that's this angle here in red. So that angle right there is 60. So you have to pull back your index finger again, and you have to do the cosine and sine of 60 degrees. Now let's start with the uh, cosine, the cosine of 60. So again, your index finger is pushed back and the cosine is square root of top. So we have square root of one over two, which is one over two. Now let's do the Y value. So again, your index finger is pulled back. Now we're doing the sine. Sine is square root of bottom, so square root of three over two. Now we are in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, we only have sine and cosecant that are positive. So that means the cosine of 60 is negative. Now let's do the next degree. So the next degree is 135. So let me draw the picture for you right here in the second quadrant so let's find the reference angle here which will be 45 so again you're gonna do the cosine of 45 degrees comma the sine of 45 degrees so if you do the hand trick the finger that you're pulling back will be your middle finger the cosine of 45 will be square root of top fingers over 2 so it'll be square root of 2 over 2 the sine of 45 will be square root of bottom fingers which is square root of 2 over 2 and again, we are in the second quadrant, and in the second quadrant, sine is positive, making our cosine or our x value negative. Let me do one more. Now, the next degree that we have there is 150. 150 is in the second quadrant, like we already know, and the reference angle is this angle here which is 30 degrees. So to find the order pair for this point, we have to do cosine of 30 degrees, comma sine of 30 degrees. So the finger that you're pulling back will be your ring finger. Cosine of 30 will be square root of top fingers over two. So it'll be square root of three over two. And of course it'll be, the cosine is a negative there, so it's negative square root of three over two. The sine of 30, again, your ring fingers pull back. Sine is square root of bottom finger. So square root of one over two, which is one half. And the sine is positive in the second quadrant. So you would do the hand trick all the way around to fill in the remaining points. So that takes forever. So let me show you guys a shortcut. So notice that the reference angle for 120 degrees was 60 and look at the relationship between this point and this point it's exactly the same the only thing that changed was the uh, sign on the x value and of course this point is in the second quadrant and the x value will be negative in the second quadrant next thing the 135 the reference angle there was 45. Now look at your first quadrant again. Look at the order pair for 45 degrees and look at the order pair for the 135 degrees. It's the exact same thing. The only thing that changed was the sign. And of course, that's because you're in the second quadrant. 
Now the next one. The next degree we did was 150 degrees and the reference angle here was 30. Let's go back to the first quadrant, look at 30 degrees. The order pair was square root of three over two comma one half. Notice that we got the exact same order pair. The only difference there was the sign on the X value. And the X was negative because you're on the second quadrant. So let's apply the following trick to fill out the remaining part of the circle. The next degree is 210 degrees. So that's right here. So from here to here, we have 210 degrees. So the reference angle here is 30 degrees. So go back to your first quadrant at 30 degrees. This is the order pair. So that's gonna be the exact same value. The only thing that's gonna change is the sign. So think about it, you are in the third quadrant and you should know that both the X and the Y are negative in that quadrant. So it's negative square root of three over two and negative one half. Now the next angle that I'm looking at is the 225. So from here to here, we have 225 degrees. The reference angle there is 45. So let's go back to the first quadrant. Here's the order pair for 45 degrees. So that'll be the exact same thing. And remember, the only thing that's gonna change is the sign. Both the X and the Y will be negative. The next degree is 240 degrees. So from here to here, we have 240 degrees. Our reference angle there is 60 degrees. So we're gonna use our order pair at 60 degrees, which is one half comma square root of three over two, and they will both be negative. So let's go ahead and finish it off by doing the fourth quadrant. So the next degree is 300 degrees. So from here to here, we have 300 degrees. The reference angle right here is 60 degrees. So again, let's go back to the first quadrant. This is the order pair. So it's one half comma square root of three over two. Notice that this time we are in the fourth quadrant. So in the fourth quadrant, the X value is positive and the Y value is negative. So it is negative square root of three over two. The next order pair is, the next degree is 315 degrees. So from here to here, you have 315 degrees. The reference angle there is 45. So go back to your first quadrant. Here is the order pair for 45 degrees. So square root of two over two over square root of two over two. And again, the Y value or the Y value is uh, negative. The final degree is 330 degrees. So from here to here is 330 degrees. The reference angle there is 30. So go back to your first quadrant at 30 degrees. The order pair is square root of three over two, comma one half. And if you know this right here, the Y value will be negative. Now, one thing I forgot to do was fill in the remaining radians. So this one here, let me highlight it. That one, that one, and this one. So to fill those out, we're gonna use the 45 degree. So from here to here, that's 45 degrees. In other words, one pi over four. So the pattern now is gonna be 45 degrees or pi over four. So again, from here to here is 45 degrees or one pi over four. So let's go 45 degrees more. From here to here, it's 90 degrees or two pi over four and you should know that two pi over four reduces to two pi so let's go 45 degrees more so we left off at two pi over four so from here to here will be three pi over four let's go 45 degrees more so from here to here you are at four pi over four which of course reduces to pi go 45 degrees more this will be five pi over four. Keep going with the pattern, 45 degrees more. You are at six pi over four, which of course reduces to three pi over two. 
45 degrees more, you are at 7 pi over 4. To finish off the whole circle, you add 45 degrees more, that leaves you at 8 pi over 4, which reduces to 2 pi. So that's how you fill out the unit circle. Now the uh, special right triangles are coming into the following part of the circle. Look at the uh, first quadrant, notice that this right here is 30 degrees. So of course your 30, 60 angle, 30, 60 triangle is right there. And if I erase that, from here to here you have 45 degrees. So this right here is your 45, 45, 90 degree angle. And of course the last one from here to here is 60 degrees. So 30, 60, 90 again is right there. And it's pretty cool if you see all three at the same time. So that one, this one, and this one. And of course you can see that it just keeps uh, rotating. They are all part of the circle. So that's the end of the um, unit circle lesson. So go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe.